The Battle of Plassey, 1757, a day that redefined oops in the annals of history. Imagine a chess game, but instead of pawns and knights, you have soldiers and elephants. And instead of a checkmate, you have the reshaping of an entire subcontinent. Let's delve into this almost comical, yet incredibly significant battle that seems like it was directed by a playwright who loved irony a bit too much. The stage is set in Bengal, India. It's June 23, 1757, and the British East India Company, under the command of Robert Clive, is staring across the battlefield at the considerably larger army of Sirajud Daula, the Nawab of Bengal. Now, Clive was not exactly the poster boy for moral integrity. He had a reputation for being as trustworthy as a snake in a hamster cage. But hey, he was effective. On the other side, Sirajud Daula, young and impetuous, was not the most popular guy in Bengal. He had a knack for making enemies faster than a politician breaking campaign promises. This turned out to be a significant factor in the upcoming drama. So, picture this. Clive's forces are massively outnumbered, about 3,000 to Siraj's 50,000. The odds were so stacked against the British that the bookies in London were probably already paying out for a British defeat. But Clive had a few tricks up his sleeve, or rather, a few well-placed bribes and promises. He managed to get some of Siraj's commanders, notably Mir Jafar, to agree to betray their leader at a crucial moment in the battle. It's like convincing half of the opposing soccer team to score own goals. The battle started with the British troops, bolstered by their Indian allies, holding a defensive position. Siraj Dalla's forces, confident and presumably already planning their victory parties, launched an attack. However, the weather decided to play a role too. A sudden and intense downpour broke out, which in a prelude to British weather-ruining events, turned the battlefield into a muddy mess. The British had waterproof covers for their gunpowder, a detail Siraj's army overlooked in their battle prep checklist. As the rain subsided, Siraj's troops found their gunpowder wet and their artillery about as useful as a chocolate teapot. Clive's forces seized the opportunity. With their gunpowder dry and spirits high, they began to push back against the bewildered army of Siraj. Now, remember our friend Mir Jafar and his promised betrayal? Well, he decided this was the perfect moment to do absolutely nothing. He and his men just sat there, watching the battle unfold like spectators at a tennis match. This non-action was action enough to seal Siraj's fate. The battle rapidly turned into a rout. Siraj, realizing that he was as abandoned as a New Year's resolution in February, fled the battlefield. The British victory was so complete and so relatively bloodless on their side that one wonders if Clive had to pinch himself to make sure he wasn't dreaming. This battle, though small in scale, had enormous consequences. It marked the beginning of British rule in India, which lasted until 1947. The victory at Plassey essentially handed the East India Company the keys to Bengal, a wealthy and fertile region. It's like winning a raffle and getting a country as the prize. Post Plassey, the company got busy with taxing the heck out of Bengal, leading to disastrous effects on the local economy and later, a horrific famine. This is where the irony meter starts going off the charts. A battle won, partly because of the weather, ended up enabling policies that exacerbated the effects of bad weather, famine. So there you have it, the Battle of Plassey, a dramatic mix of betrayal, weather forecasts, and questionable ethics that forever changed the course of Indian history. It's a stark reminder that sometimes in history, the pen might be mightier than the sword, but nothing beats holding an umbrella at the right time.